We are so privileged to have the NHS here in the UK. The fundamental approach to the NHS was developed here in Tredega. Tredega is a very socially deprived area. A lot of long-term ill health. We're a microcosm of what's happening everywhere else in the UK. I think Paul now Bevan would turn in his grave if you could see the state of the health service now. Staff are underpaid and overworked. I think it's been used and abused, yeah. isn't it? Used and abused. It's not a sustainable model at the moment, I don't think. Uh, okay, you're doing good. Doing good. Let's just open the door. Hello, lovely. Yeah, she's back in on Thursday. It's clear from the surgery she's doing to us this afternoon. I got a nine o'clock appointment on Thursday. <laughs> it's very early for you, lovely, isn't it? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thanks, lovely. Turn on now, turn on. It's full blown from eight. I think we're all feeling a squeeze a bit. The amount of people who want to access GP surgeries, mental health, um, that has gone huge. Every day is pressure. But yeah, we do have a little giggle in between. You've got to look in there. Yeah. I'm going to get this. Thank you. Have Santa Claus weekend. Mrs. Yardley. Thank you. Thank you. So after showing that you uh, you this morning. We do see probably an older population than many GPs. Yeah. And it's your left knee, isn't it? Yes, please. Yeah. Most of our patients have got multiple comorbidities. All over. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. We're down in room six at the end. <laughs> How did that appointment with dermatology go recently? Very good. Yeah, yeah. No, no cancer. No. Fantastic. Okay. I think across this whole area, on average, we expect to see perhaps more unwell people than we would perhaps working in a more affluent area. The area has the lowest healthy life expectancy in Wales, uh, some 16 years below uh, a, a town such as Abergavenny, which is only 12 miles away. We've just done a big recruitment drive. We've taken on one doctor. If we had applicants, we would have to, we could have easily filled 12 posts. And these posts have been available on a rolling basis yeah. um, for the last, what, five, six years, five, six I years. would say? Oh, don't get upset, my love. Hang on, I'll put you down as an urgent call. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying not to cry, lovely. Is there anything I can do? Do you want me to, do you want me to keep talking to you? Do you want company or, or bear with me, my love? Let me have a look if he's free, and if he's if he's free, I'll try and put you through to him. Promise me you'll ring me back though, okay? You won't do nothing silly now, no. Promise me. Okay, thank you. You get quite a lot of mental health calls. Yeah. And it's upsetting because obviously you just want to help, don't you? <clears throat> and like when they say things like, I'm going to end, you know. They take sometimes, it's enormous. And like doctors are busy, I just want him to ring him now. Yeah, <laughs> Talk to him now. Yeah. We've got a few staff off um, that I didn't expect to be this morning. So it's been an interesting morning so far. That's Nikki, our van driver over there. The only people love us because they don't see anybody else. And uh, we're the only people they talk to sometimes. So they love a little chat on the doorstep. So in here we've just got some overflow of medication. Then if we go, let's go around this way. We've needed to have much bigger fridges. You can see by far the biggest bulk of what we need to keep in a fridge is for diabetes, which has grown immensely over the last few years. So one of the services that we do as well is needle exchange, which is something that Anna looks after. Mostly it's heroin. Mm. We get some people who come in every day just for bits and pieces, and then we have people who come in, say, once a month, and they have a big bulk. There's people who come in from gyms who have a lot for their... Like, steroid uh, use. Steroid use, yeah. yeah. Got to be trying to just be friendly and non-judgmental when they come in, just yeah. to, you know... So they don't feel like they've got to go and do other things instead. They can do it safely. Like. So what made you join Simon? Well, I finished uni and I moved home and I needed a job and it was the first one I applied for and it's the first one I got. <laughs> I'm very glad we are to have you as well. Yeah, I think I found my niche a little bit. I mean, they'll 
know what to do with them then and they pop them in the box then. All right, thank you. When I first came here 39 years ago, if you'd suggested to me then that in the future I'd be writing prescriptions, I would have uh, thought you were slightly balmy, to be perfectly honest, because it would have been a completely alien concept that anyone other than a, a doctor would write a prescription. I think without proper funding, you might well see pharmacy going the same way as, as dentistry with more and more uh, work being done privately. Thank you very much. Morning. Thank you. Um, I was a nurse for 30 years and I think I had the best years of the NHS. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think poor Niall Bevan would turn in his grave if you could see the state of the health service now, um, which is quite sad, but I think everybody is doing their best. So what we see here is the original safe from the Medical Aid Society days. But what, what I love is where you've got all the original kind of uh, logos here from when it was made for the Cardiff Eye and Mangas. So this is one of the central original pieces that's in the Heritage Centre today. But every school trip that have come in this building, they leave with a renewed sense of knowledge on the NHS, on the Medical Aid Society, on what Bevan set out to do and that is getting more important for youngsters to understand why the NHS is so important to the UK and the idea of the NHS for the rest of the world. This is Nathan Bevan as a young man and these were all business people in the town, the Query Club that they called, anti-establishment they were. Mm -hmm. I was born with club feet. I've got one foot longer than the other my father was a member of the Medical Aid Society. They all paid in. It was just a few pence in the pound that they were paying. And if your parents hadn't been paying into it, what would have happened with your well, feet? Well, if it wasn't in existence at the time, where would I be now? Perhaps I'd been a bit crippled for life. But uh, I was seen by the top doctors because the Medical Aid were paying those doctors. If you need a GP appointment, have you been able to...? Oh. That, that's a problem at the moment. If I've got a cut, if I phone up, he says, take, take a photograph of it with your phone. Well, I, I, I'm, I've got a phone, but I only use it as a phone. You can't take a photograph and tell him over the phone, and he says to you, oh, I'll make a prescription out for you. You know, you, you've got to go and see him personally, and, and it's getting harder. We have three wards, 32 patients on each ward and at the moment we are full, every bed is taken. I've been uh, 33 years in the health service and 13 years in Aspetti and Iron Bev and this hospital since it's opened. Do you still enjoy it? I love it, I absolutely love my job. And the challenges? A lot of people have to make the decision as to who's well enough to go home or move on and yeah, that's, that can be hard sometimes. Yeah. Hello Mr Bradshaw, are you okay? What are you in for? Well I come in with terrible pains in my back and um, when I had the scans they found I had two tumours on my spine and it had affected my walking. I've been in 10 weeks now but I'm hoping to go home soon because uh, things are being done in, in the house for me you know. All the praise in the world for the nurses because what they do here I wouldn't like to do it. Do you have sympathy with them going on strike? Yes. I think they were worth a lot more than they'd get. And you've got nurses going to food banks. That's terrible. Cost of living, everything. You only got to look at the news, you know. No, but I checked with the staff. There's nothing done this end. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're called genetic porters. We come in the morning, we do everything from rubbish, laundry, blood collection, specimen collection. We deliver all the food trolleys. Sadly, if we have an RIP, we bring the RIP down. This is our mortuary, but our preference would be to see your mum and dad on the ward, or if not, we've got our little chapel by here. As you can see, it's a multi-faith room as well for the doctors. Which bits do you enjoy the most? It is rewarding to see uh, a lady or gent going home to their family, yeah. I've just had my 40 years now this week. 
when I started in Trinidad, like you were overrun with staff. You, you never ever struggled for staff. But like now it's, it's, it's cruel well, to be honest. It is, it's really sad. But everybody works as a team. From Julie the manager down to the domestics, we all work as one team. Don't we? We do, and if we didn't have the one cog, everything would be broken. Correct. Wouldn't it? It would, Joe. So you were born two years before the NHS started. <laughs> Did you have to say that? <laughs> <laughs> would it be your recommendation to the younger generation to get into this line of work? No. No. Why not? Well, I just think that um, the staff are like, underpaid and overworked, to be honest. Like, i got friends who go work in supermarkets and they're having more money than me. It's stuck in shelves, but I just can't imagine doing a job like that. <coughs> I can't imagine doing anything else. We try to stick to the trolleys, so we try to get stuff as, as much as off the trolleys. But sometimes we do take it from the drawers, so we do this at least twice a day on the day shift and night shift fills them every night then, for us in the morning. So what made you want to join the RHF? Well, I want to progress to be a paramedic in the future I do, so I didn't want to go into university so young, at 18, so I thought if I'd get my foot in the door earlier, I can see what it's like and then progress in the future. What makes you want to be a paramedic? I don't know, I, I like being hands-on, I like being out and doing things, so it's just something that's always interested me. I really like it, to be honest. Like, I love the fact that I'm always busy, I'm always on the go, I'm, I'm in one place, like I know where I am, I know my shifts, my hours, like with my previous job it was like zero contract, you wouldn't know what you was working, like I just feel so settled, you're so happy in my role now, really. Hello, Tuleri. What's, what's the name? The big things I think the NHS has done well with, I think the things that have not improved are largely as a result of social issues. We like to think that the spirit of Bevan still lives and the ethos and the objectives of what the Medical Aid Society had in mind of about free health care and a, a free service to the community. Yes, it still exists today. It exists in different ways out of this building. We've got free shopping we do for people. We do free medical drops. And of course, we give out a lot of food parcels. Will the NHS be around in 75 years? Oh, I don't know. I'd like to believe so. Not in a way we would recognise it. Not unless some massive changes mm -hmm. happen. That's it. It's just open the door and in we go. Straight ahead. In you go.